ています。Number one, Bourges Cathedral, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Bourges Cathedral is extraordinary on many levels. The first thing that might catch your eye is the lack of a transept, as there's no break between the nave and choir. This departure from the norm is only made possible by the rows of flying buttresses that run the length of the nave and choir. On the inside, there's a unique double aisle that seamlessly becomes a double ambulatory. Number two, cathedral tower and crypt. These parts of the cathedral merit another listing because, while you have to pay to see them, you won't regret the small charge. If you're coming in summer, it's best to do this part early because the queues can be long. Climbing the Tour de Bear Butter Tower is no mean feat as there are 400 steps, but there's a panorama of Bourges to reward you at the top. Number three, Old Town. In 1487, there was a great fire in Bourges that destroyed a third of the city and stunted its development as it lost its annual fairs to Troyes and Lyon. But it also gives us a very unified old town, with diamond-patterned timber houses packed close together on streets like Rue Bourbonneau, and a host of stone-built Renaissance mansions. Number four, Palais Jacques Coeur. In the middle of the 15th century, the wealthy merchant and treasurer to King Charles VII. Jacques Coeur commissioned this breathtaking Gothic residence. The Palais Jacques Coeur came some time before the Loire Valley's exuberant Renaissance chateaux, but its carvings lack none of their elegance and richness. Number five, Jardin de l'Archeveche. Next to the cathedral, these gardens were laid in the 1730s for the Archbishop of Bourges, eventually becoming the park for the town hall. In a familiar French style, there are boxwood topiaries trimmed to sharp points, lime trees in the shape of globes, as well as formal lawns and flowerbeds hemmed by paths. Number six, Marais de Bourges. Just a few minutes from the old town is an enclave of reclaimed marshland encompassing 135 hectares. In ancient times, this boggy countryside slowed Julius Caesar's advance in his conquest of Gaul in 52 BC. But from around the 8th century, the marshes were brought under human control, and come the 17th century, they were drained and crisscrossed by a web of water channels. Number seven, Musée du Berry. Hotel Cujas is yet another of Bourges' fine old houses with a museum inside. This flamboyant Gothic mansion was conceived for a Florentine merchant in 1515 and is named for Jacques Cujas. A 16th-century legal expert who was a tenant for the last few years of his life. The Musée du Berry inside used to be at the Palais Jacques Coeur, but moved here in 1891. Number eight, Musée Estève. This museum for the 20th-century artist Maurice Estève could hardly have a nobler home. The building is the Hotel des Echevins, House of the Aldermen, a Gothic mansion with ornate stonework on its tower. Over three floors connected by the tower's spiral staircase, the museum has the largest single collection of art by Estève, whose career lasted eight decades and took him from surrealism to abstraction via a figurative period. Number nine, Les Nuits Lumière. In the evening from June to September, the town's most beautiful Gothic and Renaissance landmarks are lit with magnificent projections. At the cathedral. Jardin de l'Archeveche and Hotel des Echevins Palais. These ethereal images are combined with music and part of a walk that literally sheds new light on Bourges and its past. Number 10, Hotel Lalamant. In Bourges, you won't tire of seeing the city's old mansions because each is as beautiful as the last. Hotel Lalamant is one you can lose hours gazing at because of its external decorative sculptures, which are as sharp as ever and include quirky characters, pilasters, capitals, scrolls, columns, and all sorts more. Hope you like this video. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel.